Okay, as before, I want to test the effect of uh, ferrite rings on main, this time on mains cable. So I've got a piece of mains cable here, uh, a couple of feet long, and uh, let's just check the uh, if I short those together. This is lower today, 1.9. Variable. Oh dear. Well, anyway, let's say one point nine. You connect the uh, connect the cable. Three point five, three point six. Now, I have some of these. Packets of ferrites, different sizes, from the tiny ones through. Uh, oh dear, that's broken. It's a good start. That's sizing the big ones. We don't, we don't want the little ones. But these, these might be useful. So let's take this size and stick it on the cable. It doesn't go well. It doesn't go by very much, does it? Um, but that was a pig to get off again. So we'll try the next size up, slightly bigger one. That one's a bit better. That one moves on the cable. <laughs> and uh, let's try a really big one. So, even though this one is completely loose, it still increases the uh, inductance. And, uh, brilliant. That's, that's too tight. That won't fit. How about this one? Well, anyway, you get the idea. Oh, there's one. Will that fit? Nope. Anyway, four and a half. Let's clap the other one on. Not the easiest things to use, are they? These. Um. No. In fact, they're pretty flipping useless. Cheap Chinese tat. There you go. That's two. Can we get this other one to fit? <laughs> so that's three ferrite rings. No, I'll give up. So, five micro Henrys with the three ring with two rings on. Four point 
point four we just one on and uh, three point three so so as with the single ferrite rings um, we know XL the inductive reactance equals 2 pi times F in uh, megahertz times L in microhenries and that gives you the answer in ohms and uh, so we can say um, 2 pi that's 6.28 roughly um, and say we're uh, uh, operating at um, 1 megahertz so it's times 1 times 1 microhenry each of these each of these um, ferrite rings seems to add about a microhenry uh, to the cable so basically at 1 megahertz your um, the inductive reactance is around about 6.28 ohms which isn't really very effective, is it? Now, at 145 megahertz, it will be 6.28 times 145 times 1 microhenry, which works out to, uh, I did it before, 910 ohms. Now, that is much more useful. Um, basically 910 ohms in series with your cable is going to put quite a block on any interference that wants to come out of the equipment or anything that wants to go into the equipment um, at 30 megahertz it would be 6.28 times 30 times 1 microhenry um, which works out to, I think, about 188 ohms. Which, am I right on that? Um, yeah, that's right. I wrote all that out yesterday. Um, so basically you've got a, an interference source like a PSU and you've got the mains cable um, and it goes to mains plug obviously and currents and um, signals can come leaking out of the power supply and whiz down the mains cable and if that mains cable has only got an inductance of uh, a couple of microhenries there's not much in the way is there to, to stop the uh, to stop the current but if you put a ferrite rings on it can't draw the things and each one that you put on adds another microhenry of inductance and at two meters each one that you add would add another 910 ohms and that means that the current circulating round through earth and everything is reduced and therefore being as radiation is proportional to current the amount of radiation is reduced so it should work these things I think would be effective um, say 50 megahertz 70 megahertz 2 meters 70 sems I don't think they're gonna have much effect on um, on HF at all not unless you load it with several two more points on this um, these when you've got a, a piece of cable like so it's a distributed inductance so the cable might have two microhenries of total inductance but it's distributed along the cable now when you add these beads these ferrite rings uh, 
the clamp type or whatever. They concentrate all the inductance in one place like that. They added extra micro Henry, which doesn't sound much, but it's all in the one place. So that prevents the current from going through that thing. And if you put that near to the power supply, then the current is prevented from rushing further in, any further down the cable. And the other thing about RF is the amount of RF radiated is proportional to the current and the length. And if you put that close to the power supply, you've only got this little bit to radiate. Um, so you redu you're reducing the, the, the ability of the system to radiate. And the other thing is these things are lossy. They're not perfect inductances. So this isn't just like that, a perfect inductance. It's more like, um, well, an inductance with a resistance, like that. So you've got the inductance part, but you've also got the, the losses which dissipate the energy in these resistances. Um, I'm not explaining that very well, am I? But basically these things don't produce perfect inductance. They produce a very lossy inductance, which helps to, to cut down the amount of signal that gets past them. Because um, you may have been thinking, well, OK, the cable's two microhenries. So if you add an extra microhenry, what difference does it make? Not a lot. But because you can... It's a lumped inductance and it's close to the power supply, then it does make a difference. I hope that sort of explains it.